You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids. Welcome to season three and episode number 68 of The Daily Beaver here on the Cryer Media Network. Today, recording day is Thursday, March 2nd, 2023, and it will be a cloudy but mild day here at the Beaver Lodge. I'm your host, the eager beaver, pronouns he, him, he, Mr. Beaver, eh? and with me, back in his usual den, is my pal, my good friend, my partner in crime, Mr. Grizzly. Of course, a big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss Bee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Ah, it's nice to have you back where you belong, Mr. Grizzly. Nice at home in your natural environment for our Thursday morning nibble. How's your mental health today? Uh, thank you, Mr. Beaver, first off. Um, I... I'm not awake. <laughs> <laughs> it's three days in a row that I'm just completely wiped out, exhausted. I think my mental health is okay. I, I think. Usually when I get this tired is when that uh, that that asshole anxiety comes in to haunt me. But um, I think I'm too tired for even that right now. So, Ooh. yeah, I'm just going to make it through the day whichever way I can work my day. And then when I finish, I'm going to come home and go to sleep. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I'm like you, uh, I've been all over the place the last week. I don't know what happened. It started on Sunday night. I got a bit, well, actually this weekend I went to Toronto and I didn't sleep very well in the guest room. Um, Mm. but that was relatively okay. But, uh, on Sunday, for some reason I had an adrenaline rush, uh, somewhere in the evening and I didn't get to bed until four, which was when I sent you that text. Um, the next day, like I said, feeling great all the way through. So they you know, sort of went to bed at a regular time. And then the next afternoon, I was when it hit though. <gasps> Dra- yesterday, I was dragged. I had my butt under my armpit and I was carrying it. And I was dragging it all around everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh my word. Um, I was energized all day yesterday because I was super busy with work. And, and you know, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. That's righteous as the kids sometimes say, but uh, when, when work finished, I, I got out of, I left the office at about quarter to six. So I was, you know, in there at seven, left at quarter to six makes for a long day, but I did get a lunch 15 minutes for lunch yesterday. So, you know, mm-hmm. step but in the right direction. <laughs> you also you told me when we were doing the pre-show there that you had like logged in 10 K at the office. 
Yeah, ten kilometers. Yeah, two days, two days in a row. I, I marched ten kilometers throughout the building. So, uh, yeah, that's well. Uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays are the busiest. Today is a little less busy. Wednesday is an insane day in the office because everybody comes in. And starting at the end of May, um, they have to come in two days a week. That's a government of Canada thing, and because I'm, I'm contracted to a Crown Corp, uh, they have to observe government of Canada rules and regs. That's right. why I, you know, I had to work on family day when everybody else had it off. Right. 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 Um, okay. I know that you sent me something about, uh, that are, uh, that Mew, Mew Bin Shakes sent us and I want to keep that for the main portion, but if you have, uh, any like little tidbits that are a little lighter oh, I to start do. the show, then let's do it. I do. Good uh, first off, um, here's, here's, here's misrepresentation. Or, or, or horrible reporting on CTV's part. Uh, Chatham yes. sent a death damaged with blue spray paint from CKPS, which is a CTV affiliate. Chatham Kent Police are looking for suspects after the Chatham Cenotaph was damaged with blue paint. That's yes. not what happened. This nope. is. Just days after Germany's neo-Nazi uh, AFD Christine Anderson finished her Canada tour and CTV News will only say the Canadian War Memorial was damaged with blue spray paint in uh, quotation marks. Those are Nazi swastikas. Do better CTV news. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. <laughs> what do you uh, say to that? Like, yeah. what do you say to that? Uh, look, yeah, swastikas in CPC blue. Yeah. And they, and, and all they said was damaged with blue spray paint. Mm -hmm. You're leaving out the crux of the story. That is irresponsible. That is neglectful. That is trying to make it look less than what it is. That's what we call burying the lead. Yep. Yeah. I don't know what CMB means, Kitland. I was wondering as well. Yeah. Uh, well I I've found that out. Yet. Haven't been able to find out. So I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. So uh, Chatham Kent police are looking for suspects after the Chatham Cenotaph was damaged with blue spray paint. Not only damaged, was vandalized and desecrated vandalized. with swastikas. <laughs> vandalized and desecrated. <laughs> Sometime, uh, is it desecrated in that case? I would call it desecration. Okay. It, it, uh, that, that's a monument to people who gave up their lives to fight against Nazism. Yeah. Now, I know that there's another word that's used for something, and sometimes it's desecration, sometimes it's something else, and mm -hmm. I wasn't sure about the difference. Uh, sometime overnight between Tuesday and Wednesday, 6.40 a.m., an unknown person or persons used blue spray paint to damage the Cenotaph at 6th Street and King Street West. If you have any information or video to help identify the suspects, please contact Constable Jordan Tone at jordan at chatham-kent.ca or 519-436-6600. Anonymous callers may call Crime Stoppers at 1 800 222 TIPS or 222 8477 and may be eligible for a cash reward. And that's about all that CTV Windsor published uh, about that as of about six hours ago. Yeah. On that smaller little article, however, it did say actual swastikas, but on the larger one that went on the main network, it just damaged with blue paint. Literally buried the lead. <sighs> Yeah, because this is the type of thing that you want to, you know, talk about in euphemisms, right? No, no. Deliver us the straight goods. Facts first. They left out the most important fact, which makes one beg the question, why would they do that? Why? Mm. Why, why would they do that? Why? I mean, let your let your minds wander where they may, but why would they do that? You have to wonder. Mm. You have to wonder. I have another one for you. Another quick one. Right. Here. It, it's got two quick clip, uh, two quick images. The first one. Uh, this is uh, another one of the bad vaccine takes. You got to read this because I'll read it out so you know the listeners can can hear it. But this is like, wow. You can download any Bluetooth app and literally track those that have been vaccinated with when within 100 meters from you. 
They have their own electronic signatures within their system after being injected. I've seen it done. You can then go in deeper and read their vitals and temperature using just a regular Bluetooth app and connecting with their body. A doctor was forging vaccines, and after an incident, he got a call from the government telling him that they can't connect to the patient. Not his cell phone, but him directly. That speaks volumes. No, it doesn't, because this is the best thing that follows it up. From Patrick Dusselblom. At bad fa- replying uh, at Patrick Dusselblon replying to at bad vaccine takes. So the government implants this dastardly tech that's centuries in advance of what's on the market into people, and some random can just use an open source app to get connect into folk to get their vitals with no authentication at all via Bluetooth. Color me skeptical, and he did spell color right, so I'm assuming this gentleman is either Canadian or, or from the UK or maybe Australia, but either way, he spelled color correctly. But it's like, yes, the, the technology that they're talking about, that is 23rd century Star Trek stuff. It does not exist, number one. Number two, an open source, unsecure app like Bluetooth can, no. Wow. Like the reach, the reach that they have, it, like the mental gymnastics to come up with something so ridiculously f- f- fantastical. It's like, I give up. I just give up. I, I can't even respond. As, I wouldn't even, like, Mr. Dusselblon was much kinder than I would have been. I would have been, you're an idiot, and then just noped out of there. I just, mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. Yeah. No, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I see some comments here from the kids. Does CMB mean something? And uh, somebody's suggesting that maybe it means Cash Money Brothers. Um, Cash Money Brothers is an actual thing, uh, just so you know, but it's an African-American street gang that operated in Harlem, mm-hmm. City during the 1980s and 1990s. Yes. So I'm not sure that neo Nazis would identify themselves with a group that is black. Probably. I'm going to go out on a limb on this one. Just, well, they're, they're, <laughs> I know it's a stretch. But there, there is a, a, a <laughs> there is a radical group called the uh, what is it? The Black Hebrew Israelites who are anti-Semitic. Okay. Okay. What? <laughs> You, you I, missed like two things in the title. <laughs> yeah. I got something for you, uh, Mr. Grizzly. A couple of things to start off. Uh, here you go. If you would put the first one up, please. Happy to. Oh, um, there it is. Yeah. So there we go. So we have a Nazi brunch again, uh, mm-hmm. the CPC, the Con Nazi Party of Canada. And uh, you will notice that in this photo, there are 10 people. Now, you there's the other photo of them all standing in a row. When they're standing all in a row, there's only nine people because this guy over here is not in the top photo. So I don't mm. know if he was taking the photo and they got somebody else to take this one, but he's not the first one. So there were actually 10 people there, not nine. That's uh, 10 Nazis. Um, yes. And now, of course, we know who this guy is, right? Dean Allison. And mm-hmm. we know how this guy is, Colin Carey, mm-hmm. with Mr. Where There's Smoke While He's Literally Burning Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we have... <clears throat> Leslin. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Again, mm-hmm. I, I thought of a nickname for her, but even that would be too close. Mm. <laughs> best, best not then and pretend that you did. <laughs> oh, I, it's, you know what? It's it's really hard, you know, when you when there's something that you really want to say. I was having a conversation, I think it was with Kit Jen, uh, and uh, you know, I, I was saying, Well, ooh, you know, she was mentioning like I could get dark and so and she likes dark humor and i said well you know i have levels and you know this is for public consumption Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. out there so i mean i let myself go to a certain part but i mean you know if i know my audience and you're sitting right next to me i can get pretty dark (laughs) (laughs) and we discussed that yesterday right so uh you know but i was wondering okay but while we're talking all about you know them three and her but there are 10 people in this photo who are the other six Mm. One would wonder. I don't know. Well, we know for three. We know for this lady here. We know for this lady here. Mm-hmm. And I assume it's this lady here. No, no, sorry, this lady here. Okay. These three. And they are Stacy Cowder, Judy Stinson, and Bethan Nodwell. And Bethan it Nodwell seems rings a bell. Yeah, it seems to, uh, they seem to be part of a group called Trinity Productions. And they have this little thing when they were on their page, when they were asking people to donate for the What Would Christine Anderson Do Tour. 
They actually called it the What Would Christine Anderson Do? Yes. Because because you know they have that that acronym, right? What would Jesus do, right? Or what would mm-hmm. Jesus Christ do? So she replaced the Jesus Christ and the What Would Jesus Christ Do so acronym with her own initials. Yeah. That's um, tell me you have an inflated sense of your own ego without telling me. So, yes, Trinity Productions, and apparently they're a group that was recently founded that creates these activities. There's a massive team of volunteers and sponsors behind the scenes assisting the success of Christine Anderson's tour. So, basically, it seems that everybody else, it was just people who volunteered and really, 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 really wanted to have a dinner with the Nazi. It's it certainly would seem so. Well, I mean, they didn't just get any Nazi; they got one from Germany, mm, an authentic, full on. Yes. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> gee, it's like it's like when what was it? Jason Kenney said, "Yeah, I, 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 I will resign," but the day after, I finally get to see the Pope. <laughs> it's true. It's true, and it's and it's and it's bizarrely funny at the same time. It's like, there we go. Yeah, that's better, right? Um, I it just this <laughs> just. But first, the Pope, like this. I'm going to leave now. The Cardinal says, but first, a feast. John mm-hmm. Tory, I'm going to leave now. But first, my legacy. It's like the the hockey catagog. No, I'm not going to go. But first. I need a chance to fix yes. what it is that I broke. You can trust me. Like, what trust me. is it with these people? I don't know, man. Like, honestly, I, I just, I don't I know. I believe that they're entitled to one more thing after they're busted. They want their cake and they are damn well determined they're going to eat it as well. Eat it, they oh. will, but it won't be cake. Pretty crap on a cracker. <laughs> I'll say. And, um... The other thing, because we were talking about it yesterday, uh, Mr. Grizzly, if you will. Sure thing, sir. People receiving um, money, fake money. That she actually sits there and she counterfeit. Sits stamps on them. Because uh, I don't, I mean, she's trying, I mean, clearly it, nobody's going to pass it off as a knockoff 20, but I mean, she is literally giving people something and trying to pass it off as actual money and convincing them that it is. So I don't know that should be a crime. I mean, I know the criminal code does not specifically, you know, uh, make criminal attempts to represent things that are clearly are not legal tender as being right. money, but. There's a context here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, take this money, I'm your queen, go out and spend it to make your life better. And then they realize one day that um, the delauded dollars do not bring upon calm and inner peace. <laughs> Del- delauded, isn't that a, a painkiller? I believe so. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I think we should, that's what we should start calling her because you got to be high to believe any of the shit that she spews. Yep. So apparently you also need to wear the white coat and white hat uniform to receive money, not only if you work for her. Tell me it's not a cult. Mm. Tell me it's not a cult. Yeah, boy. And, oh, and then there's this thing over here. Um, yeah, the, I won't play it all. We'll snap into some segments, but you'll uh, get the idea what's going on here. This is really, um, well, just get a sense of I should have left my keys in, sir, because all I did. All right, kids. Let's see. Got to get this phone off me. And buckle up for safety, of course. See if I can shortcut through here. Woo! Oh yeah. We're part of the motor parade now, kids. Here we go. So this guy basically spotted the Prime Minister's motorcade mm-hmm. and decided he was gonna follow it. Jeremy Glass on tyrant control. Always good when you are about to engage in a crime and say your name. <laughs> live stream the crime that you're committing and maybe, identify yourself maybe don't do crime maybe maybe don't do crime you're too dumb to crime well coming to you live 
from Mississauga, Ontario. This is where I believe our Prime Minister will come out. So and this is driving where maybe I can have a word while with using him. his phone, which is also a crime, by the way. <laughs> Just- oh. He's yelling. He's about to yell, Just. Guy's not even out mm-hmm. yet. He's about to start yelling at him already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's dead. Yeah, it's dead. Like this. This. So, okay. Again, totally deluded by your own sense of importance that you think that you can do this. Yeah. So basically, he's there. I gotta try to get my window down first. You can guarantee he's coming out right here. No, you can't necessarily guarantee that. No. <laughs> All right. Sorry, guys. And my filming's a little bit shaky. I'm trying to get my magnaphone set up for this prick when he does come out. Oh, boy, I have my comments I could make here. I have so many comments I could make here. I could right. really hit below the belt, but I'm not going to. I'm trying to get ready for my close up now, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> So anyway, he's trying to get all oh, that set second, up. For a second, I thought you were my buddy Curtis Reiki, but no, we're not that fortunate today. No, they got trespass security for the whole building. Oh, so okay, I was out the back door. with these guys, and I just so followed them out front. The okay. All right. You want to go with the other guys over there? That's perfect. If fine. you were able to give me two more seconds, you'll probably come out. Maybe you will actually address me. I know. So I was just hanging around. Like, if you could just give me two more. So the white privilege, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the right yeah, privilege yeah. at play here. If you could just give me, so basically he's told to go. Then he starts driving around, around, mm-hmm. and around, and around, and around, and around, and around, and I'm around. Th- I was thinking more about "Round Round We Go" by Trooper, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going round and round and round and round and round. And then eventually a policeman comes, and right now I'm getting the spinning wheel of death. Yeah, that happens. Pull it down until you get it back up. Yeah, um, yeah that's just um, strictly bizarre behavior. I have, I have, uh, I have one for you. Oh, um, this is uh, 39 seconds of of insanity. I don't know what else to call it. 39 seconds of insanity. Oh, I'm going to put you on oh. mute so there's no echo. Okay. And here we go. Check this out. This is uh, this is absolutely crazy. And boom. And I'll share. And then we'll uh, just mute you so there's no echo. And here we go. We're just nut jobs. Yeah, you said it. <laughs> then you have our government telling Russia that uh, they won't be dealing with any more of Russia's lies. Russia's lies. Well, Mr. Putin, if you're watching this. Uh, us Canadian citizens, we don't want to interfere with nothing, but you're more than welcome to come here and grab our prime minister and his whole caucus and all the other government official, officials who are cowards. Come and take them, please. Uh, we will even help you uh, load them up. Okay. Okay. He calls himself a freedom advocate and then commits treason. <laughs> Openly asking for treason acts on our soil to be committed by an invader of a country we're currently supporting. Do do they not see the flaw in their logic here? Or or are they just like look, I, I don't want to pick on somebody's level of intelligence or lack thereof, but the the it's just staggering to me that somebody could could say something label themselves as a freedom advocate and a freedom fighter and then call for an individual who qu- would quite literally enslave us. Like, what? what is going on in this world right now? This... <laughs> I, th- I think I got the end of it now here. Yeah, uh, okay. Set up. You just got to share it with me and I'll, oh, I'll darn be happy it. to show it. Came, why does it keep doing that? That's really weird. I don't know. <laughs> Technology's weird. Here we All go. Right. How to get out of a parking lot? You need a bigger info this you? way? There we go. I'm just trying to figure out how to get out of here at this point. 
I'm just trying to You're figure out. You're going to get arrested for trespass. Do I go this you way? You've been told more than once. I've been trying to figure out how to get out of the parking if lot. If you can't figure out how to get out of a parking lot, you have bigger yeah, issues. I'm from a little town like Shelburne where there's only 8,000 people. Seatbelt. Get out. We're done. All right, I'll get out if you want. This is, you can't just climb in my vehicle. Yeah, we can't. Get your your hands. hands. I'll turn off my phone. We're done. Well, so he always notice how he always has. I was just writing up behind these guys. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, like this. And then on that one, before the part that I didn't see is when they stopped him before. Is like, okay, okay, yeah, okay, really, really good this time now. Okay, yeah, it's like yeah, because the last three times, yeah, right, right, right. I just, <sighs> it's just so <sighs> damn. Damn, 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 damn annoying. It's just, it's just beyond. I, you know, uh, where do you think you can do this? You can get away know. with this. You can do these types of things. Who, who teaches you that? I don't know. Right? I, I, I just, some days I have to, whoops. Some days I yep. just have to give up because I don't understand what's going on. And then we get this guy. Here we, here we get another one. You know, we right. talked to the, about the people at the the Seton Library in, in Calgary. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tried to get to, well, this happened. Hello? Yeah, yeah hi. Derek from Constant Messenger CPS. Can we talk about what happened on the weekend? Um, why are you showing up at my home? You know why. Why, why are you showing up at my home? <laughs> Yeah, you guys you could call me and we could. You could have called me. <laughs> when? Uh, 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 you could have called me. They did apparently call him. Yeah. Why do we need to talk about it? Because you're going to be arrested for it and charged. Okay. So we can go do it this morning. Or I can just put warrants out for you. Charged with what? Mischief and causing disturbance. Okay, let me uh, let me get dressed. Okay, you good with that? Just give me a minute. Okay? Yeah, you betcha. Thanks, pal. Okay, so one, they call him to let him know he's going to come, but he did not pick up the phone. They call him to give him a head up that he is going to be there's going to be an order warrant and arrest. Who does that? Then he says, "Can I go get changed?" And the cop says, "Yes, he can, Mister Grizzly, if you will." It continues. Cops just showed up to my house this morning, wanting me to go down to the cop shop with them. I can't get a hold of my lawyer right now, and uh, I'm not going to go with you guys. He said he was going to get changed, not to call his lawyer. <laughs> I'm not really sure what's all going on. So uh, apparently, you need to be sure what's going on before you get arrested. Now, and that's that's a new rule that I have not heard of. Yes, yeah. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable, I'm not comfortable with being arrested today. Thank you very much. Could we reschedule this for the springtime, perhaps? You know, I, 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 have, I have winter chores to attend to first, you see. So you guys just do whatever you got to do, and uh, I got to go to work, and um, we'll take it from there. I'm going to um, tell this is going to go down. Normally, this is where people uh, get turned around and the hands up against right they're being <laughs> very patient with him and and i think saucy see which rhiannon has spelled it out yeah. the amount of white privilege here is gross if that was an indigenous or black man they would have been hauled out in their pajamas i don't doubt that for a split second another comment i saw on the web is that this guy is following a certain procedure when they know that somebody could be very volatile or dangerous making sure mm-hmm. that they're standing 20 feet away and <laughs> yeah oh yeah no the police are trying to know what they're doing any way yeah. whatsoever because they've already seen his antics, right? So they're like, he could be armed. We don't know. Well, that's why the policeman went back to the car when the guy said, can I get changed? Because it's like, just in case you come up with a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. What's the charges? Mischief. Because of the service. Okay. In relation to the YMCA, it's on the weekend. Right. Okay. okay. I understand. Okay. Can I give him my card? If you change your mind, you can get a hold of me. Sure. Okay. 
You know, I'm not playing games with Jared, but I might press the question with you. Know, That is me. That's my card. Okay. Okay. Thank Change you. your mind. Yeah. Right Thanks. Right. God bless. And God bless at the end, of course, right? Because he's pastor. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. yeah. 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 Right. All right. And then this is the one that you shared with me today, Mr. Grizzly. And this is, um, yeah. What what the actual? Yes, you're right. So, exactly. <laughs> my thoughts, absolutely, exactly. My thoughts, absolutely, exactly. All right. So here we go. Here's a little um, 101 for you, kids. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is how it's done by uh, Mubin Shake, who you know, yeah, friend of the network, network, yeah. Yeah, if you don't know who he is, uh, but uh, knows knows his stuff when it comes to intelligence and spycraft and all that kind of stuff. So how the manufactured crisis works. Number one, someone from CSIS leaks info. Two, media uncritically runs with it. Three, CSIS leaders admit they can't tell parties who to have on the roster, which contradicts the source and the reporting. Four, media keeps repeating contradicted source info. X CSIS Dick Fadden, as we said earlier uh, on a previous show, reported on Chinese Communist uh, CCP, Chinese Communist Party tactics 10 years ago. Harper government literally made secret deals with the CCP, Mm -hmm. FIBA, for example. The partisan nature and timing right after the EA report of the leak and subsequent media coverage is to make like CCP influence suddenly emerged under Trudeau, a point that we were making on the show. Last cynical point. Remember Atwalgate? Both mm-hmm. political parties knew about him, but media conspired with anti-Trudeau folks to sabotage the India trip with claims like, quote, Trudeau invites ex-assassin to dinner. These people have no scruples. They will throw their mother under the bus. P.S. Of course, don't forget cavorting with a pro-Putin bigot. Do you see any more sick scrutiny by media? Nope. It's over and done with because they have their distraction. You can see for yourself how media corporations are in lockstep now, trying hard to push this fake scandal. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yep. And then Brutal. Some, someone asks, do we know for certain that it is a CSIS leak, that it couldn't come from someone on a committee who was in possession of legitimately, for example, as we suggested on the show yesterday, mm-hmm. because there are conservative members on the NCCOP and the director of communications for the party, the newly hired director of communications, communication of the party, just happens to be one of the defeated candidates in the writing of the one of all the candidates' names who have been made public, insinuating that this person was willing to take China's money and to do Chinese Chinese bidding. Now, okay, so we're not saying there's anything there, but it is a paint by numbers picture coming to life. People from the committee get the documents. Documents get leaked. Between whether or not the leak would come from a political source or whether from the leak would come from someone inside CSIS who's disgruntled, I would be more inclined to lean onto the side of an opposition party if, mm-hmm. oh, yes. if there was no way that the documents could have legitimately gotten opposition hands. That would be one thing. But all parties know what's in the documents. And since, since you can only know what we can show, and CSIS has showed us nothing. All we have is the word of a journalist, I believe his name is Sam Cooper, and of Bob Fife. And it's not like Bob Fife hasn't been wrong on stuff before. Mm. He's he's been known to twerk stories. He actually admitted to. Yeah, let it slip. Yeah, I think uh, we, uh, I might have that clip somewhere around here. I'll be looking for it. It's, It's in this thread. So if I happen to to fall upon it, I will show it. Um, but uh, yep, that's question is asked. And uh, Mr. Sheikh said, we are expected to uncritically accept the claims in the leak. So asking about that is not cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the bigger story is that someone leaked CISA's documents. That's a huge security breach. Mr. Sheikh, 
absolutely. <laughs> See, we're being just, we're we're not even being directed to a story. So the main story is that somebody actually leaked this, uh, and then um, Sam Cooper mm-hmm. put it. It was from Global. Posted this about twenty hours ago, uh, and it says here. Toronto TV has some footage of alleged CSIS target and LPC kingmaker Michael Chang at an LPC leader at LPC leader Justin Trudeau town hall rally in Markham 2015. Um, with interactions on stage suggesting Mr. Chan's importance at the 2015 rally, LPC leader Justin Trudeau embraces Mr. Chan warmly and pulls him next to him for a photo to start the session. Um, so he presents these two. And uh, someone says, this story is literally that an Ontario Liberal MPP and cabinet minister went to a Liberal rally, but the story is said in a scandalous tone. Mm-hmm. Look, if they, can, if they can try and make a paint-by-numbers picture, so can we. Except the difference is our paint-by-numbers actually add up <laughs> to a real picture. Yep. <laughs> Indeed. Now there's a poll out of course, that came out because you pull on that. And of course, it says that a plurality of conservatives believe the election was stolen. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just, ah, uh, man. Well, I mean, you know, when you want to believe. So, but they're, they're bringing the January, they're just bringing the January 6th. They're, they're trying to, yeah. Bring it yeah. Through, yep. It's all They're trying out. to. Yeah, the, the, the election was stolen. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. There, there's actually no evidence to even back up that statement. None. None. Yep. And then there's another comment from Moving Shakespeare's. Yeah, sorry for my wording. Should have been CSIS report. I'm more inclined to believe this is a partisan leak from opposition than someone from CSIS calling up the media. So we were thought this yesterday. He's confirming it, that this is what it, he, he suspects what it might be. Yes. He is well, way more well placed to know than me, exactly. and, right? And uh, you know, then um, uh, people who are familiar with the show might be familiar with a tweeter that goes by Diane Marie at Diane Marie posts. Always very well researched, a good source. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in truth, do we even have a report to look at to satisfy ourselves that there actually is one? Unless I've misread events, which is certainly possible. All we have is Robert Fife say so that there is one and that he has seen it. Source undisclosed. Yeah. If you, like I said, if you can only know what we can show, we, the public, know nothing. We are just being taken for a ride and accepted, uh, you know, expected to just take it. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. Let's take them for a ride. Yep. Ah, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you. That's crazy. All right. Uh, I believe we have a show, Mr. Grizzly. We do. We do, because right. I, I got to get into the office. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, so, yeah, we didn't have one any one specific s- subject. It was just a whole bunch of stuff that uh, a lot of stuff. A lot of we stuff saw here and there, but you see where it's all sort of. Well, they're they're trying to distract from the whole into- Nazi story, right? And and look, I, I keep seeing what's trending on Twitter. The hashtag Pierre Poliver is a fascist. It's on Twitter everywhere. It's trending right now, as a matter of fact. Jeez. It's the number one thing trending in Canada. So, you know. Yeah. Um, here we go. This is the one that I wanted to, to show here to, very quickly um, from a Nazi Caillou. There we go. That's the one. Canada's democracy. Whoops. What'd you do there? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Canada's democracy has been hijacked by China. Our election was stolen, and Justin Trudeau is an illegitimate prime minister. Here we go. They're bringing January 6th. Yeah, the, the misinformation campaign has well begun. Yep. And they're off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, eyes wide open, kits were about to be uh, buried under a mountain of bullshit. Right. Lots of slaloms down Bullshit Mountain just before the spring comes. So, uh, eyes wide open because that, and this is why we do the civics part because they expect you not to know this part so that they can pull over the wool over your eyes and have you believe absolutely anything. So, 
just be careful. All right. Uh, we hope you love listening to us because we love making this to you. Remember, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. That your peeps know about us because democracy is something that you do. We're still going to keep on saying it. Write your MPs, write your senators, write your MPPs. Let, you know, let them know that you're not standing for this Nazi shit. Mm-hmm. You do not see Nazis. <laughs> you do not want to see Nazis. Uh, we love to hear from you. Reach us on our Fasta book at True North Eager Beaver, our Twitter feed at True Eager, or by email at True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com. And if you subscribe to our pod page at podpage.com slash the True North Eager Beaver with a hyphen between each one of those words, we will have our shows to you when they're fresh off the bandwidth. Uh, we have a couple of shows on podcasts waiting to come out because we've had to leave the laptop at the remote location, but they'll be coming out tonight. So just please be patient with us uh why not also subscribe to our true north eager beaver incorporated youtube channel smash that button it helps us up big time we're trying to reach a thousand we need your help to do that and we also need your generous support if you can uh you can find your way to our tip jar if you would like it mr grizzly's pointing if you're watching you can scan that qr code and if you are listening you can go to coffee ko-fi.com slash eager beaver all in one word uh to make your donation we appreciate everything that we get thank you very 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 much and finally if rather than a donation if you'd rather have some merch to get something in exchange for your donation well we have that beautiful eager beaver merch you could be styling showing everybody that you're fashionable and engaged at the same time by going to our site crier.co slash crier hyphen media hyphen shop and click on all the tabs that say true north eager beaver and it will bring you to this beautiful merch with beautiful designs by our friend kit ozzy pete and well this is your eager beaver from the Beaver Lodge saying, until next time, dear kids, it can be a tough world out there. So please be kind to you and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom. Yes, actually, do not let the um, non-mainstream media, and in some cases mainstream media, distract you from the fact that uh, members of the Conservative Party of Canada dined with a Nazi and greeted More a Nazi. Yeah. Don't, don't keep the pressure on. Don't let them distract you from that fact. That's what they're trying to do with this bullshit story that they're just launching that we just showed you that the, the tweet from uh, Nazi Caillou, how, you know, the election was stolen. That is not true. We know that. And they're just trying to distract you from the story that you really need to focus on is that Skippy has not public publicly come out and, and, and denounced or disavowed or kick the MPs out of caucus for dining with a Nazi. And that someone, likely an opposition operative, has been leaking CISA's documents, and we still have the stag and doe thing going on. Yeah, yeah. And they're trying to distract us from all of it by creating uh, fake campaigns. And it's, it's garbage. And no, no. Keep the focus on, remember... The hashtag's there. Pierre Bolivar is a fascist. I didn't create it. It's on Twitter. You can find it. You can seek it out. Feel free to use it. It's. I'm not telling you what to do or how to do things, but you know, it's there. If you want to use it, you can use it. But keep the focus on because we can't let this one go. We can't let it go. <laughs> Thank That's exactly you. That's what it is. Head. Yeah. <laughs> it's the scene from Up with the dog saying squirrel, except underneath it's written China. Yeah. yeah. That's what's going on. Okay. All right. Roll the credits, Mr. Grizzly. Will do. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind.
<laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> thanks, thanks to those who stuck around for the last second Easter egg. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.